Okay, welcome back to the Kilburn home. Um, I told you that I'd be sharing with you here on part two a little bit about some of the instruments, and we're going to get to one of them, and then on um, the next video you'll see a hand, another handmade instrument that my father, Bill Kilburn, made. This is a Kilburn mandolin. I don't know if you can see the top of the name on there. Uh, this is a handmade uh, copy of an F5 Lord Lord Gibson same type that Mr. Bill Monroe played. And my dad been, has been a uh, mandolin luther for um, over 30 years, but he's been building instruments for almost 50 years. Um, makes dobros, handmade uh, guitars, um, you know, copies of Martin, Martin uh, 28s and 45s and 18s, and, and of course a lot of different mandolins. Uh, He's made over the years. Um, typically, a mandolin like this is uh, made out of um, curly maple uh, backs and sides. Sometimes they use bird's eye maple, um, but this is kind of like the tiger um, sunburst finished. Kind of looks like a tiger skin, and uh, of course the top is usually some type of spruce. It's either an old English spruce, could be cedar. Uh, some tops are made out of cedar, and then uh, the neck is maple with a um, ebony fingerboard, um, black ebony, and with the pearl dots. And uh, on this particular mandolin, um, instead of fretting all the way down at the bottom, uh, we left some of the frets off of this one um, for uh, playing reasons, uh, for different styles uh, of playing. What you're going to find out in bluegrass music is uh, everybody has a version of their bluegrass. Um, we know that Mr. Monroe was the founder of bluegrass music, the father of bluegrass music, and um, uh, that's a traditional style of bluegrass. But later uh, you have groups like Psychograss that do a lot of uh, uh, what we call far out type bluegrass, but good stuff, good acoustical music and you have a lot of just acoustic crossroads music that's flavored by bluegrass and uh, southern rock type music uh, that's all just come kind of collaborated together uh, even bruce bruce springsteen does a lot of acoustic type uh, variations and uh, somebody asked me one time so what kind of music do you like and i said all of it and um, basically uh, i do like all music uh, of course my favorite is bluegrass appalachian style music uh, with giving a great preference to the spiritual music uh, that touches people's hearts and gets down in your heart and pulls on your heartstrings and uh, has a feeling behind it, has something behind it that uh, just makes you want to go on and continue your day and, and smile and, uh, and uh, know that there's um, peace in your life. That music just brings a lot of peace, a lot of comfort to me, all the Appalachian music and the stories that people tell. Uh, has been a great inspiration in my life and uh, it's, it's really made up my life, uh, the culture that I live and the way I live. And uh, You hear a lot of redneck jokes, but uh, I got a car out there, I'm getting ready to have somebody haul off and, and we're going to scrap it because scrap's worth so much money right now. But uh, you know you're a redneck if you got eight cars in your front yard and none of them uh, run. And so it's time to scrap some of them. But um, uh, there, is, there is so much comfort and peace, and there's a lot of comedy uh, with the Appalachian people because they were people that told funny stories and done a lot of funny things, and uh, so we're going to get to that too as we go along here, so make sure you stay with us. The next song on this Mr. Monroe album, by Uncle Penn, is the Methodist Preacher song, and um, I did find a date on this, 1972 is when the copyright was, but we know it's much older than that, uh, and we probably won't know the exact recording date, but um, um, I hope you enjoyed looking at the Kilburn Mandolin. I'm going to bring a copy of a Martin D45 that my dad hand cut all the pearl inlay and all the abalone pearl inlay in it, but uh, these mandolins originally came from a, a, an instrument called the Tater Bug. And uh, they had a lot of them in Yugoslav. They had a lot of them uh, in Germany. And uh, the Irish folks played a similar version of this. 
Um, and then when they brought it to the Appalachian Mountains, somewhere in the 20s, uh, the Gibson Company, uh, Mr. Lord Lord, uh, picked up on uh, uh, the F holes uh, and started making guitars that were F holes, in the, in the, maybe around the 19, in the teens of the 1900s. And then uh, he decided uh, instead of to make the mandolin with the big round hole in the middle, uh, that he would use the F hole version, and then the squirrel top we call it here. Uh, he would use that. Uh, uh, this is sort of looks like a squirrel's tail. Uh, if you can see the back of it, in a little bit better uh, picture of it there. But he formed this idea of using the bone um, uh, jaws, uh, the jaw bone of a shark, uh, in the detail of the inlay on these. Uh, you can see that that is actually bone. It's not plastic. Um, my dad uh, has tried to continue with that tradition of using all bone. A lot of times even the bridges are made out of bone. This one has uh, um, the ebony type on it. But yeah, a little history there about dad's music and, uh, um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go along. But let's listen to a little bit of the Methodist preacher and make you want to get up and dance and do a little boogie or something. And I'm guessing that some of them Methodist preachers back in Bill Monroe's day were pretty fiery. <laughs> three of this. Thank you for watching part two. Uh, click on there. So far all of our videos that we've had have had positive uh, uh, ratings and remarks and uh, we have um, viewers um, uh, in Alaska, Sweden, uh, Germany, Russia and getting some real good positive feedback from these videos so we know people are enjoying them. But there's more to come so uh, make sure you click on to part three and let's watch some more Appalachian music and stories and um, let's talk some more about the old days. God bless you. Have a great day today. <laughs>